Hi, this is Larry Greenblatt, and I want to share with my uh, CISSP candidates my number one tip, I think, for 2020 on how to pass the exam, and that is understanding system development life cycle models. And I said models. Uh, one of the top things I have to let people understand, they said, what, what is the SDLC? And I said, well, it's not one SDLC. You know, there's a lot of different ones from, Larry, what is the CISSP one? And what is the ISSP? Square? <laughs> That's the whole point. They want you to know that there's a lot of different development life cycles. It depends. It's not just people in different countries use different terms. It's, it's um, in the same organization, your disaster recovery planning committee is probably using a different development life cycle than maybe your application security people or your uh, application development for a project for NASA that they, they got to get right the first time versus the people that are developing whatever a Groupon app that you can update you know, every day if you need to. All these different things will have different development life cycles, but the processes are always pretty much uh, lined up. And those, well, first of all, if you're one of my students, you know that people use different terms to describe things, you know, and, and they may have different, whatever, we use five steps, we use six steps. When you read your, your test, you have to be like a waiter that listening to somebody describe what they want. Don't tell them they ordered it wrong. That's not how a waiter should treat their customers. So it's very important that we, besides understand that there are different models and, and different numbers of steps, people use different words differently. And if you misunderstood, you know, it's like a big problem with AI today. You know, if I asked you, to bring me a picture of a dog tied to a fence, I think most people would go, a picture of a dog? All right, so we'll, we'll take a, tie a dog to a fence, take a picture of that. But an AI has a 50-50 shot, I think, of taking a picture of a dog and tying that to a fence. Well, you, that's all you said. It's hard to understand things. You know, it's hard to understand people. That's, most people, I think, have misunderstandings when they have problems. That's a, so you don't tr uh, want to do that with your test, right? And understand that people have different things. SPVR, very, very cool stuff. All right. Also, um, as I mentioned, we have five basic steps. All right. So at a very simple level, you go to a restaurant. You tell them what you want. They write down how they intend to do it or the plan. They give that to a cook. They build it according to plan. They implement it or whatever. They follow the plan. Then they bring it out to you. Is this what you ordered? Whatever the thing is. Yep, all right, and you use it. Actually, they have deploy and maintain. I would even add another step here. I would add operate. To me, if this were, say, a kitchen, that uh, a cook tested and decided, okay, that's what we wanted. And he told the restaurant owner and the restaurant owner paid for it and signed off. Um, you'd have the phase where you have to shut down the restaurant due to the deployment to get the new stuff in there. Kind of try to do your changes, you know, the moment of least impact. Then, it, then they get to cook and use the new system. But you know what nobody likes to do? Clean up the kitchen. That's maintain it afterwards. So I like to separate operate from maintain because maintain is one of the most difficult parts and where we introduce a lot of vulnerabilities. I don't know about you, but for me, I'm not that good in security. I, I, I'm sorry. I know I'm supposed to brush and floss after every meal. I, I'll be honest with you. I don't do it. I don't brush and floss after every meal. I try to at least do it at nighttime before I go to bed. Uh, so nobody likes to clean a kitchen. Nobody likes to patch a server. Nobody likes to drop their car off and take it out of use so they can change the oil. Even it's just an hour. I hate waiting there. Their coffee sucks. Uh, nobody likes to change passwords. Nobody likes to do backups, <clears throat> but it's common knowledge. These are the shortcuts that people take that introduce so many vulnerabilities.
All right. So that's basically it. Uh, my model that I use also has a, um, uh, well, I get a little more granular on what it is you want. So sometimes depending on what the, the system is, like I might have an idea for a business or for, uh, I'm a musician, I might have an idea for a song and I go to you know, the skills. Are you ever going to build this thing? Yeah, I don't know if this makes sense. This project, I've worked on a few projects that shouldn't have passed feasibility. But anyway, uh, that's not a choice when uh, it's something like compliance to, to legal requirements. So should I get insurance in my car? Should we put sprinklers in the building? No, you will do that. All right. So then I, I break my uh, requirements into two other separate phases. And that is, um, to me, this is governance the owner of the restaurant saying that um, our goal is to, you know, build a new kitchen. We're going to go in the direction of seafood or whatever like that. And it's got to be done by this date and you have this much money to spend. And here's the limits of your authority. Uh, and then you're going to work with the, the actual people, the kitchen staff and the process owner. That's probably the uh, head chef. And we in security, if this was like a security project, would probably be called upon, uh, to help them understand some of the cool security features and stuff that they might want to consider because they don't know much about security. You know, even the, oh, the the chef might not know about the new ovens that are available. So it's very uh, important that we understand that we might need to uh, help them understand functionalities as well as how well do these functions work, you know, so how fast are they? Security tends to slow things down, you know, so, uh, or, or how often does it break down? Those things almost never break down, assurance requirements. Oops. And, uh, assurance. Um, a lot of assurances, by the way, in your near future will be uh, compliance requirements to a lot of laws, right? Um, and, and hopefully we understood what they wanted. That's common knowledge. But this is the hardest phase. People don't always know what they want. Uh, some people might pour over a menu for a long time. Some people might ask the waiter what you suggest. But assuming we figured out what they wanted and we understood the limits of our authority, we will uh, design a, a, a solution that meets that as things. This is what they wanted. So this is a strategy of what they wanted. We might even document that just like a waiter might document, you know, a good waiter would write down and say, Hey, is this what you guys wanted? Did I understand that uh, you, you're doing seafood? You got to get done by this uh, date. Da, 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 da. I understood what the cooks wanted. Yep, yeah, uh, we analyze this stuff. Yeah, sure. They understand what functions of assurance you got. All right, good. We got it. We know what you want. Let's design a way to get that. Before you said you needed to encrypt and meet PCI compliance, here we've got it all down. We're going to use TLS, right? For key agreement. We're going to be using the elliptical curve, and we're going to use AES at 256 bits, blah, 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 blah. These are exactly how we intend to give them what they want. This is when we create our specifications, our specs. It is common knowledge that specs are created during the design phase, and then we get people to build according to plan. We get electricians, we get plumbers, right? And they verify that they are building according to plan. And we mentioned that earlier. And then we, uh, uh, we, we have the user, uh, the cook come out and test it and say, uh, yeah. Right? And that's validation, we see that. And then it goes in and we say, you gotta deploy, operate, use, maintain. We know a lot of problems happen there. And then we might get rid of something. You might get rid of a car. You might, uh, you're not getting rid of driving, right? You're not removing that process, you're, but you're getting rid of that particular system. When you dispose of, say, a mail server and retire it, don't just degauss and shred hard drives, crypto shred. Make sure that you can get the data that you still need, right? Availability might be the most overlooked goal of the CIA trade. 
All right, that's it. I hope that helps people. Uh, if you want to know more, I do uh, exam preparations. I've been doing this for uh, almost 30 years. Uh, CISSP and CCSP, CSM. Um, I do live online classes. I do pre-recorded classes and half-day one-on-one sessions and do this year's my yearly membership program. So for uh, 250 the silver will get you uh, access to all four of my uh, pre-recorded classes. And if you do the gold for uh, 1495 you'll have that plus access to any live online class. It's, uh, $4,000. And then uh, finally, if you do the... Uh, platinum then you have access uh, to all that plus two half day one-on-one -on -one sessions awesome all right thank you may you all live long and prosper